Hey, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to be looking at how to take photographs in the snow, a really challenging environment, surprisingly, but this video is gonna tell you some tips of how exactly you can take the best photographs possible in the wintry conditions. Snow can be a surprisingly challenging thing to shoot in. Just because you're dealing with a lot of unfamiliar terrain if you're not used to shooting in something like the snow. But I'm here to show you exactly what you need to know about how to get the best photographs possible if you're out in the white stuff. Now, number one thing you need to remember about shooting in the snow is composition. Compositionally, your snow photographs have to be pristine. And if I'm shooting pristine photographs, the number one thing I'm trying to do is stay out of my own way. And what do I mean when I'm talking about that? Well, staying out of my own way means watching where I'm stepping. If you see the best winter photographs or the photographs taken in snowy conditions, it's those photographs that don't have any footsteps steps in them. So you always have to be aware compositionally of where you're going to shoot, what you're going to be doing, what foreground you're going to be including because you don't want all those distracting footsteps in the foreground of your images. It can be really easy to get off track and kind of forget about where you are. But if you can scrounge around and find a way to stay out of your own way and keep your footsteps out of the photographs that you could potentially get, that is a number one best chance way of taking better photographs in the snow than most people because most people don't necessarily think about that concept when they go around and start searching out photographs in the snow. Number two thing you can look for when you're photographing in the snow is contrast. Contrast is the name of the game in snow photography just because you're dealing with a lot of gray tone contrast. If you think about snow photographs, you're photographing a lot of like trees or pine tree foliage um, and then you have a lot of the white snow around it too. That's gonna trick you and trick your eyes into thinking that you're taking great photographs of a lot of contrast but when you get those over in post-processing you may not get and see exactly what you thought you were shooting in the field. That's why with contrast, and especially high contrast photographs like snow photography, you must constantly be looking at the histogram. Inspect the histogram when you're shooting and try to find it. You can find that in most cameras in the menu settings or in your display settings. You just toggle the display over to where you're constantly seeing the histogram on your screen so you can constantly see what colors are being represented. To get the best contrast out of your snow photography, make sure you're keeping your histogram on that classic bell curve look or the majority of the graph in the center of the histogram. So you want it to kind of look like a wave going through the histogram graph and that will give you the best contrast. You want to be sure you're getting enough detail in the snow and the detail in the bark of the trees or in the pine trees that you're looking at to get the best contrast possible because you want those textures in there too. You don't any want shadows that are too dark and you don't want any highlights in the snow that are blown out. So you can constantly watch your histogram and make sure that you are getting the best tone curve possible with your histogram and live view on your camera as you're out in the field. Number three thing about snow photography is sometimes smaller is better. A lot of times you see snow photographs of like this huge expansive view in national parks, which are absolutely great. That's fantastic. But a lot of times the smaller scenes win. The most intricate, like simple small scenes usually win, whether that's one or two trees secluded in a forest, whether that's um, some dead foliage that has snow perched on top of it. And a lot of times what you're using is a telephoto or a macro lens like this to get the most out of those scenes. And a lot of times, especially if you're shooting in the snow, you need to watch for wind when you're shooting those smaller scenes because the smaller you go and the more intricate details you have, the more the wind is gonna blow those features back and forth and affect your overall photography. Constantly watch your exposure seeds and making sure those aren't uh, blowing around and being blurry in your photographs, but also be sure 
that you're looking at your aperture too. Do you want everything in focus? Do you want to seclude something by itself and have a blurred background? Always watch those things. And since we're talking about backgrounds, always be watching what the background of your subject is going to be. Are you gonna make this a black and white photograph? Is your subject going to be standing out from the background that you're shooting? Is your subject going to be lost in the background? Do you want the snow in the background or the forest in the background? These are gonna be huge details that you need to watch for in the background of your images so that you can be sure that your subject stands beyond what you're actually photographing. If it gets lost in the background, it's not gonna be a very successful photograph that people are gonna see and know exactly what the subject matter is. Taking a larger view in the snow is a little easier to do than the smaller scenes that you have just because a lot of times when you're doing the larger scenes, the wind isn't impacting everything as much. When you get down to those small details, you can really see uh, the, what the wind can do to a landscape and to a feature that you're trying to photograph. And the last thing we wanna to touch on with snow photography is stay warm. There are plenty of things that you can do to stay warm, keep your fingers warm. Right now my fingers are absolutely freezing outside of my gloves. You can get gloves like this. These are made by Valerit and um, they expose your finger and your thumb to easily access your gear, change out memory cards, and then tuck them back into your glove. When you're done, get warm shoes, warm everything. A lot of times if you're shooting outside in the snow, it gets really, really, really cold, like I am right now. So thanks so much guys for watching this. I'm gonna go back inside, clean off my glasses, and see if I got any good shots. Hopefully I did. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below or give me a good thumbs up if you liked it. Can't wait to get more in-depth scene shots taken in the field and take you guys behind my lens to see exactly how you can do the same thing with your own photography. See you later, guys.